about to get real, bitches. Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this little blaster right here and uh, a lot of you may be asking what is it? Well it's a Stern Defense AR-45 conversion thing. Obviously you guys probably noticed in the intro this is a select fire lower. Uh, it's a standard AR-15 receiver so this system will work on any AR-15 uh, out there and basically what it is is a combination of the upper receiver here uh, the Stern Defense Magwell adapter, and then also uh, their buffer as well. So how did this all come about? Well, I was down at the Big Daddy Unlimited shoot, I don't know, months ago now, and um, the Stern Defense was there. I've actually shot some of their stuff in the past, but they had a bunch of pistol caliber ARs set up. Um, 40, 9 millimeter, 45, etc. Some of them were select fire, some of them were suppressed, some of them had rifle length barrels, some had pistol length barrels like this, uh, etc. And I shot a bunch of them uh, because it was towards the end of the day and I think they just didn't want to take any ammo home. So I shot a lot of their ammo, which I appreciate, and tested their stuff out. And while well, I've seen uh, mag conversions like this in the past from other companies, none of them ever really felt solid to me. So this one did. Um, and again, we'll get into it a little bit later on, but then following that, if you guys haven't seen it, definitely I recommend checking it out. Uh, Eric over at uh, Iraq Veteran 88 did a meltdown, or attempted to anyway, with a nine millimeter conversion. Fired many, many thousands of rounds through it on full auto, and the thing just kept going. So uh, that added to my perception of the durability. And uh, throughout this test that you guys are watching right now in review, uh, I put over 1500 rounds of 45 ACP. The majority of that uh, was fired fully automatic. And we had a grand total of zero malfunctions at all. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, nothing came loose, nothing moved, anything like that. Um, so I suppose let's get into the components and sort of walk you through the entire system. As we typically do here on the channel, we'll start out at the front and sort of work our way back for some semblance of order. Uh, it does come with a blast can or a flash can, whatever you want to call it. And that one there is proprietary from Stern Defense. It's an aluminum uh, muzzle device. What it's designed to do is project the flash and the blast, the noise signature forward of the shooter. So I fired this setup here once with this just to kind of make sure it worked in its factory configuration. And it did, it worked just fine. Um, but after that, this gun was shot suppressed the entire time with a uh, Gemtech GM45 can. And uh, again, like I said, we had zero issues at all. Um, the interior diameter of the rail we'll put in there, um, but it will allow for a lot of different suppressors out there. And again, they make these conversions in all different calibers. So if you have a nine mil can you want, Whatever they make those for that. Uh, continuing on back, the barrel itself is 4150 CMB steel, which is nice. It's melanited as well. It has a 1 in 16 twist. Of course, it's in 45 ACP. And uh, it has a very generous uh, feed ramp, I guess you'd say, back on the rear. And with these MP mags, basically the magazine where the round sits goes straight in, the round just goes straight into the barrel. And I mean, that's about as reliable of a system as you could have in terms of design of feeding anyway. The handguard is made out of 6061 aluminum as well. It has quick detach sling swivel points out at the end, as well as back here at the rear. Um, those are not anti-rotational. So if that's the thing for you, just know that. It has the MOX slots there at the three, six and nine o'clock position. And then of course, 1913 rails up top. Uh, it's secured via this little clamping system back here in the rear. And each of these bolts, um, interfaces with the barrel nut and then on the bottom here it has this little set screw that goes up into that barrel nut as well to prevent it from uh, turning or anything like that it also has these tabs that go over it over the uh, upper receiver as well i should say so there's no way this thing's going to move it's a very secure system like i said majority of the rounds i put through it were fired on full auto it had no signs of movement or anything like that so handguard in that regard certainly is good to go 
The upper receiver is essentially a mil-spec upper receiver with a couple differences. It does have the dry film lubricant in there, which is nice. Uh, again, that's mil-spec, but the port here is opened up. So our ejection port is opened up, and then of course, our uh, ejection port cover there is also enlarged, has the stern on there, get stern. Um, so it's opened up so that way it can more reliably eject 45 ACP cases, um, because of course those are larger than 223-556. So when we pull it apart here, we will pull out our charging handle and bolt. Now this is a straight blowback system, if you guys didn't already realize that. So there's no actual gas tube in there and you guys should be able to get a good look there at that uh, feed ramp. It's very large, uh, there's no mistaking it. It's gonna go right in there every time. And we have the stern made charging handle. Basically it's a mil spec with an enhanced latch on there, which just certainly is nice. And then we have our bolt. The bolt itself is made out of 8620 steel. You guys can see they added some weight in there on the back just to kind of slow down the recoil impulse. And let's talk about that real quick. So the first couple of times I fired this gun, uh, with it suppressed at least, I thought I was getting uh, false slide locks while shooting it. But what was actually happening is it just, it, the operation of the gun is so slow, I just had to give it a second to go forward. Now, this is sort of a thing, if you don't shoot ARs a lot, you probably would never even think about it, but I shoot them a lot. I'm very used to the recoil impulse and I had to get used to that. I kept looking, looking, and the bolt of course would be closed by the time I looked, but it was just so slow. It felt like it wasn't uh, operating correctly, but it was. So that certainly is nice. It makes it very controllable if you really just want to get rapid shots on a target. Um, so that's good too. The uh, finish on this one, of course, is nickel boron. They offer this with a traditional phosphate finish as well. I think a melanite version as well. Um, has a big old tool steel extreme extractor there. Definitely chuck the cases out with no issues as you guys saw. And then uh, the buffer itself, again, it's an 11 ounce buffer. Uh, they recommend that you use that with it. I should also point out the cut here on the bolt. So if you look in there, it's cut very wide and that is to accommodate a number of aftermarket triggers that are out there on the market. I can't tell you that it works with every trigger out there. Um, we we're using the Geissele uh, Super Select Fire and it worked just fine, but again, uh, they cut it out and designed it this way to be uh, user-friendly with a lot of different triggers out there. I'm not sure if there's a list. If you guys have a question about a trigger compatibility thing, uh, I definitely just give them a call. I'm sure they'll be able to tell you that answer there, but wanted to point that out. It's also cut so it can use a JP uh, spring. However, in 45 ACP, they recommend you don't do that. And all the other calibers, that's just fine for those of you guys that want to do that. Uh, we just used, again, the buffer they recommend with a mil spec spring, and it worked just fine. Now, the actual magazine conversion portion here, our adapter, is pretty cool. So uh, the majority of it is made out of 6061 aluminum. It's type three hard anodized. And uh, I debated going over installation in this video with you guys, but it's so easy that I, I, I kind of figured I could just skip it. And there's videos online and instructions, of course, come with it as well. But all you really do is put this in there. You just push it up in the magazine well, the mag catch will catch it. And then at that point you pull out with equal pressure all the way around, then tighten down these set screws at the bottom and you're good to go. Um, it has a last round bolt hold open, as I'm sure some of you guys noticed in the intro. And basically this piece back here, that's activating your bolt catch. When you push it up, that's what's gonna hit it. And at that point, it's gonna catch the bolt at the rear. That piece is made out of steel, as is the feed ramp here. So the feed ramp is actually made out of steel and it has a nickel boron finish as well. Again, very durable stuff. I think Eric at Iraq Veteran put like 6,000 rounds through theirs and had no issues at all in terms of that. So in terms of durability, build quality, those sorts of things, it really is done right. Now I'm sure some of you guys are asking why are you using the Smith & Wesson m &P 45 mags? Why aren't you using Glock mags? Great question. I thought of that as well. <laughs> and uh, the thing I didn't realize until I, I actually called Stern and asked them if they made a Glock uh, conversion is that factory Glock uh, 45 and 10 millimeter mags are actually wider than an AR-15 magwell. So uh, regardless of how thin they made their adapter, there's absolutely no way they can make it to work. Whereas with the metal Smith & Wesson 45 ACP rounds, or mags rather, uh, fits in there just fine. And I wanna give a, a shout out to the folks over at Smith & Wesson. Uh, they came through because I don't have a full size Smith & Wesson M&P 45. So they sent out, I think like five mags that we used throughout the review. And uh, again, thanks to those folks, but uh, it's very good mag, very reliable. As we said, we had no issues at all. Now, one thing that is a training issue that I just realized as I was sitting there um, is that a lot of us have that built-in habit to hit the magazine release, to drop the mag, because that's what it's there for, right? Um, on the conversion, you can't do that. The mag release is actually back here. It's this little button. As you can see, everything drops free, but there's a lot of times I was doing this. It's not gonna hurt anything um, when I should have been doing this.
I want to run some hull points through there and see how it does. We have some uh, Remington, I believe they're called HTP stuff in there, and uh, we'll see how she runs. Function just fine. There's just a couple other points I wanted to touch on before we close the video out. Uh, number one, the way I got this by ordering the upper, uh, the buffer, and then the adapter is one way to do it. You can also build it. So if you have some parts that you just want to repurpose, uh, they have the ability to do that as well. So they sell different kits. Uh, they sell just the barrels, they sell just the bolts, they sell just the adapters, all those sorts of things. So there's tons of options out there in terms of magazines. Uh, they make them compatible with Glock, uh, Beretta, Smith & Wesson, SIG, and probably some others that I'm not thinking of, but I know those off the top of my head, they definitely do work with those. Um, in terms of accuracy, I'm gonna roll it in at the end, guys. Unfortunately, I went out and shot an accuracy test. You guys are gonna see it. The gun's plenty accurate. Um, I forgot to hit record on the main camera. So you guys are gonna see the target camera. I'll roll in what ammo is there, then you guys will see me talk about it. That'll be at the very end of this video. Um, but in terms of accuracy, it was shooting very well. And it fed hollow points just fine. I think we may have already shown that in the video. It fed anything we, we put through it, uh, 185 grain stuff that's a little bit hotter. And then, of course, the majority of what we put through it was the uh, Federal 230 grain ball ammo, and it ate it up just fine. So, what do I think of this? Well, I really like it. It's a freaking smile machine. Um, I handed this out to a lot of people uh, during Christmas. We were down with family, and everyone loved it. Everyone had a big old smile as soon as they finished shooting it. Um, my wife said it was her favorite machine gun she's ever shot. Of course, I realize the majority of you aren't going to set this up in a machine gun configuration. Um, but just out plinking, it's just fun because the recoil impulse is very strange with that 45 and the really heavy buffer. It's really smooth. It's very easy to get back on target. Um, I will, of course, because this is a select fire lower and I don't have a ton of those, I'm going to actually remove this, but I am going to put it on a dedicated lower and keep this gun set up because it's just super fun. Uh, it's one of those things that if you're trying to teach new shooters, those types of things, um, it's easy and it's reliable and it's just, it's a, it's a fun little gun to shoot for sure. If you guys have any questions about this that I didn't cover in the video, by all means post down below in the comments section. However, uh, the best place to reach me if you actually need an answer to those questions is over on my Facebook page. I do get to everybody over there. Sometimes it takes me a few days, but I will get to you. Uh, if you guys are new here and you like this type of video, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you've already done that and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, make sure you sign up for my email list. You can do that at my Facebook page that we just talked about under the sign up tab. You can also do it at my website as well under the sign up tab. Um, and I only send out one email a week with the videos of the week and then some deals that we find along the way. So should this unit here go on sale, we will definitely put it in the email and let you guys know. That said, in terms of price, it's not that expensive. I would imagine I've been rolling in prices and screenshots and stuff like that throughout the video. Um, but it's not inexpensive, but it seems to be extremely high quality um, and runs great. So that's about as, as good as it can perform. That's what it's done. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video. Definitely saw a difference there with match ammo versus practice stuff. So that gecko up first. Center to center there, we're right at three inches. I should point out too, thanks to LAX Ammo for sending the ammo out for this. And then we came down to the Federal Train and Protect. That's a great group. About an inch and a quarter on that one. So that's about a 2.5 MOA group. Just a touch bigger there with the SIG. Center to center, we're right at an inch and a half on that one. So, uh, again, three MOA group. Uh, with pistol ammo, guys, I'm not complaining about that at all. I'll, I'll take it for sure.